and then you watch that bird. <laughs> When that bird flies away, you're done. <laughs> done watching that bird. But uh, those are the kind of those are the kind of hobbies I'm looking into now for myself because the hobbies I used to do as a kid, you know, the hobbies I did as a kid, I can't do them anymore. Not without people judging me. You know, when you grow up, like I, I can't I can't go to the playground all by myself anymore and jump on a swing set alone. I can't do that. You know, the only way for me to go to a playground and not look like I'm going to kidnap a kid is to kidnap a kid and take him to the playground. With him. You know, who's got the time? So I can't do that. You know, people get real weirded out when they turn the corner on a public hiking trail and find me building a fort in the middle of the woods. People get real funny about that. It's like answer the riddle and I will allow you to pass. <laughs> Not that complicated. I don't want you to make such a big deal about it. You're making it difficult at this point. And what is so wrong with a grown man playing with a couple action figures once in a while? Right? What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing wrong with that. Sure, it's okay to collect them. They still let me collect the action figures, but I gotta keep them in the box, put them up on a shelf. Keep them in the box, put them up on a shelf. Answer me this. Smart guys. How's the immortal Hulk Hogan supposed to defend your freedom against the Iron Sheik? I can't take him out of the goddamn box. <laughs> huh? Make any sense to me. Yeah. While we're talking about it, while I fully support you playing with your action figures, I do not support you playing with my action figures. Yeah. Two reasons. First reason, that you'll just bang them together and play with them wrong and make a mockery out of the entire art form. <laughs> and the second reason, uh, mine. <laughs> My toys. <laughs> own toys. With your own toys. Me, action figures a lot like testicles. You know, I got, I got no problem if you play with yours, but we're going to be real good friends. You're going to play with mine. <laughs> You gotta put some time in. You know what I'm saying? Where that's gonna happen. It's a serious thing. One of the things, one of the things that you can still do as an adult, one of the hobbies I enjoyed as a kid that you can still do as an adult is you can still ride your bicycle. Still go for a bike ride. I can get on my bike and pedal around. That's still socially acceptable. That's still okay. But even that, when you grow up, even riding your bike's gotta get all weird and complicated, you know? Like when I was a kid, my bike didn't have it. Headlight and a tail light and a speedometer and a heart rate machine and a little flag and a seat specifically designed to make me feel like someone's trying to shove a dolphin up my ass. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean wearing spandex shorts and a jersey that made me look like I was on a team that doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean that. I'll tell you another thing. When I was a kid riding my bike, never wore a helmet. Never wore a helmet. He said, Ben, what if you crash and hit your head? Yeah, I did. <laughs> A few times. <laughs> totally fine. I'll tell you another thing, when I was a kid riding my bike, never even wore a helmet. <laughs> never wore a helmet. I said, Ben, what if you crash and hit your head? Yeah, I did. Totally fine. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with a little advice. I'd like to leave you with a little advice. Uh, if you couldn't tell by my appearance, I don't date anymore. Uh, but I do think that I, I have some advice I can give the young fellas maybe out there in the dating scene. Give them some advice. Let me first say that I uh, fully support women's equality, women's rights, so you can vote now. It's wonderful. <laughs> But I still think even in this modern world, there's still some room for chivalry. There's still room for a fellow to be a nice gentleman, be an old-fashioned gentleman. So fellas, if you're out on a date with a nice lady, you know, open the car door for her. Pay for dinner. If she's cold, give her your jacket. 
And at the end of the night, walk her to her door with no expectation of that going any further. You know, when you're out on a date with a nice lady, if you so much as think you see another man even glance at your lady, you punch him square in the fucking mouth. <laughs> and you escalate that situation to an unnecessary level immediately. <laughs> She's gonna look at, you, look at you and think, he's fucking crazy. <laughs> crazy for me. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Ben Max. Thank you, Brian. Enjoy the rest of the program. Bitcoin. 
<laughs> so none of you are rich here, I see that, okay. Uh, it's people like me, okay? It's people like me that aren't used to having money, right? Like I order food for delivery, which is a service I never thought I'd be able to afford, and then someone shows up at my door, and I just give them all my money, because it's too much pressure. And then they show up next time, and I'm like, get you back next time. <laughs> I, uh, being a delivery driver, do you guys, do you guys believe in aliens? Anybody? Yeah. Being a delivery driver has made me believe even more, okay? Because sometimes it's the only explanation. I was on this one delivery, and the entire family was strange as fuck. And that is my first point, right there. I was there for about a minute, and I interacted with the entire family. <laughs> they didn't all come up to the door or anything, but they're doing things in the background, like, to convince me they were normal. Like, I knock on the door and the dad's like, all right, everybody, places. I'm sorry, they could be aliens or actors. He's like, everybody, places, call this one Aliens Among Us, right? And then he opens the door and he's smiling giant the entire time, even while talking to me. He's like, oh yeah, the pizza we ordered. And then his daughter, happy as ever, like, nobody's actually that happy, right? And she just walks by, playing the violin. <laughs> and then his sons are in the background, and they're wrestling, and that's normal, right? Except there was no struggle. It was like there were aliens that learned how to wrestle from watching the WWE. <laughs> And then their mom is just standing on the last step of their stairs, okay, looking at their boys, and she's like, human boys will be human boys. <laughs> That's when I knew you guys. That's when I knew my suspicions were right. Aliens support gender roles and don't hold boys accountable. <laughs> Equality, right? Can we get on? We, okay. That's fine. I, uh, you guys, I think I might be closer to an alien than most, though. I, I think my girlfriend might be an alien, okay? Let me tell you why. I don't trust anybody that can immediately fall asleep at night. We flip the switch, shut the light off, and it also shuts her off. She's just out. Like, personally, for me, I have to convince myself that I'm falling asleep. I'm like, you feel relaxed, you feel weightless, of course, half dream, half real thoughts, right? For her, she just falls asleep. I'm like, do you not have anything to worry about at night? <laughs> She's like, no, the others will be here in eight days. <laughs> sleep talking. Or... Personally, I think the real reason I can't sleep at night is because she's next to me. <laughs> uh, but no, I love her, right? She's my little extraterrestrial, you know? Uh, and I want to give her everything she wants in life, but recently there was this one thing that I just don't think I can give to her. You guys, my girlfriend wants me to hate fucker. <laughs> guys in here, you're like, uh, and? <laughs> I don't think it's in me, right? It's not my nature. I don't get angry and then horny. Like, I've never punched a hole in a wall and then wanted to fuck it. <laughs> and I'm just, uh, I'm actually. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you guys with this last thing. Uh, I was thinking recently, like, uh, what I used to do when I was younger in the summer. And uh, me and my friends, we used to go outside and we'd spin around as fast as we can and we'd get all disoriented and try to function. Like, that was us getting intoxicated before we knew what being intoxicated was. We was like, oh my god, I'm so fucked up. Should we kiss? What? I don't know. so I'm going to feel shame either way, you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. I'm in Grand You guys get it. I'm in Grand Rapids. I know you guys get it. No, it's for real. That's crazy, man. Like, it's, I'm still working my way through all the Catholic shit, man. It's a, they set the hook deep. They set it deep. I remember, like, I'm, I haven't been to church in years. I was at the dentist the other day. They give you that minute before they come back and work on your teeth. I'm just sitting there by myself. I hear in the back of my head. Because I know that you're not flossing. <laughs> Your gums are gonna burn in hell. What? Over here? 
It's just weird. It's an odd thing. It's an odd thing. I remember being a little kid, laying in bed, and one of the first things I remember, and my grandma, my Roman Catholic grandma, tucking me into bed at night. She lays you down there and she says, Repeat after me, little Matthew. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Who knows the next line? If I die, I'm fucking five, Grandma. <laughs> Can we cool off on the existential dread for a couple of years? <laughs> kind of focus on the Legos right now. I would appreciate it. <laughs> it's intense, man. What a weird. The weird thing. The weirdest thing about being Catholic is you don't get to pick. You don't get to pick whether you're Catholic or not. That's just the priest just dips you in the thing and you're Catholic. There's, you know, the priests aren't really known for their grasp of consent, you know what I mean? No, no, I know. They just stay with, stay with little baby, just innocent little baby, innocent little baby, everything's your fault. That's how that works. <laughs> Almost indiscernible motion, just that quick. Innocent baby, innocent baby, everything's your fault. That's it. Priests have two big moves. They have this move right here, they have this move right here. <laughs> I know, I know. That's a rough one. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But I should consider moving that joke to another parish and never talking about it again. That's how rough. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. A lot of weird traditions in the Catholic Church, you guys. A lot of weird traditions. Reconciliation. Who remembers reconciliation? Yeah, dude. That's like when you're 13. It's like middle school, you know? 13 years old, you go talk to the priest. You're supposed to tell all your dirty secrets to the priest when you're 13. So, to recap, at 13, you're supposed to go talk to a guy that thinks masturbation is urging a turtle spot in hell. Like, what do you want to talk about, Father? Because my biggest problem is I only have two hands. Like this. Yeah. Let he who has a free hand throw the first stone, is all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, that's I was putting in the time. I like, look, let's, let's hold on with that point. I, I like to practice self love with my self love, you guys. I've been jerking off for a long time. I'm okay at this. I'm really good at jerking off. You know what I mean? Like, when I first met my wife, you know, there's always that moment you fellas know what I'm talking about, where you meet somebody and you're getting hot and heavy and she wants to be generous, you know, and she reaches out to give you a little, little hand love and you're like, look, you're just embarrassing both of us. Like, I'm the one you're, like, if this were a baseball game, I'm the closer. Like, just call it in the righty, we can hit the showers in about 90 seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a pretty funny, I told my, <laughs> it's a pretty funny joke, but now I've been married for 10 years, I tell my wife that, I tell her that I'm in the mood, she'll just go to like, she'll kneel down like a third base coach, just, <laughs> she gives me the signal, she gives me the signal. Close yourself out there, I'll start. Some of these are jokes. <laughs> now what were we talking about, okay, the Catholic faith, that's what we were talking about. I've been to church in a long time, but I still work my way through the sacraments. Uh, I just completed my favorite of all the Catholic sacraments. Uh, that's alcoholism. <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite one. I enjoyed that one a lot. Uh, I can't say that being Catholic is the reason I'm an alcoholic, but it's kind of like a shortcut. You know what I mean? If you go to church, like sometimes twice a week when you're a kid, everybody's there. They're all staring at the guy in this fancy bedazzled frock, holding up his gold pimp cup full of wine. This is the greatest thing you'll ever have in your life. <laughs> You should probably try it. I can argue with Jesus. It turns out he was right. Here's what they don't tell you. Little pro tip. Now, they don't tell you fast forward 15 years when the police officer pulls you over. He doesn't care that you're drinking out of the gold pimp cup in the car. He doesn't care you guys. This is the blood of Christ, officer. Uh, we're going to need you to step out of the car, please, sir. Yeah. The only way you're not going to jail tonight, son, is you can tiptoe across that pond over there. <laughs> it didn't work either time, you guys. It didn't work either time. <laughs> I'm glad you like that joke. That one cost me twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to be sure. I had to be real sure. <laughs> no, but it's true, man. I'm a sober. I'm a sober guy now. The coke table is like. No, it's true. I'm a sober guy. I'm a sober guy. It's good. It's a thing that I do. It was time. You know, I, I had a real heart-to-heart -heart a few years ago uh, with the state of Michigan. <laughs> it can be pretty persuasive. <laughs> no, but it's good. I enjoy it. A lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed since I quit drinking. It's been like, like over 10 years now. But I, like, I was at a restaurant the other day, and there's all these fancy flavors and drinks now. Like, I, it was, It's changed since I got out of the game. Like I was, they asked me, I was at a restaurant getting ready to order. They said, have you ever tried our habanero cider? I said, 
drank a bunch of tequila and got pepper sprayed one time. Is it like that? <laughs> I'll just stick with the ginger ale, I think. <laughs> no, it was time. I didn't get two DUIs, that's a true thing. Uh, I got two DUIs. I wasn't sure how it worked, and from the UP, I thought we had a two DUI handicap. I didn't know. <laughs> didn't know the rules, apparently. Yeah. Anybody, I, yeah, I, that's true. I'm from the UP. Anybody from the UP in here? Anybody ever been there? No? no there's only like six of us. Oh, yeah, you've been there. It's a beautiful place. I love it. I actually love the UP. It's a good place to be from. It's beautiful and, like, terrifying. I describe it as, like, Narnia with racism. <laughs> but, yeah. okay. with, with the key difference being that nobody comes out of the closet in the UP. It just doesn't. Yeah. And the carpenters build all the houses with extra closets in them. They just do. <laughs> Uncle Larry's just creative. No, he's just, just real happy. That's no, a great place. I love it. It's a weird place to grow up. Uh, it's a weird place. Because I was a weird kid. Uh, I've looked like this my whole life. The glasses. I think without the beard, though, like, and without this beard, I look like Rachel Maddow's gayer sister. Like, that's a, it's not the greatest place to grow up. I just, like a little Labrador retrieval, all anxious, but like a little weird dog, but like half as useful and twice as codependent, you know? Like, just odd. But it's good. People, I admire the people of the UP. I admire them. They're like a, like rugged individualists. They do not want to talk to you in the UP. Like they don't care what you have to say. You can tell you know this because when you cross the bridge, you see all the stores up there. They put everything they sell on the signs to the store. Have you noticed that? Like I was up there with my wife. She'd never been there before, and I took it for granted that sign. And she leaned over and she said, "What's ice cream, smoked fish, beef jerky, fudge pasties? What's that? <laughs> Is that good?" A lot of words in that joke. <laughs> no, it's weird that they do stuff up there that I've never seen anybody any, anybody else do anywhere. There's restaurants in the UP that do, they have signs on them. They don't have hours, no name, nothing. Just three big plywood letters. Say eat. <laughs> that's like the smartest shit I've ever seen. Like that's all. Like that's exactly what I want to do. I think they should do that with every business. I think they should start calling gas stations P. <laughs> Hotels, sex. <laughs> or in my case, cry yourself to sleep tonight. I've been married for 10 years. I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> no, it's true. I'm married. I've had any married people in here? Yeah, that's sure. Why not? I've been married for a while. It's going good. Uh, I'm happy. I'm a happy guy. Like, being married is a good thing. It's kind of like winning a prize. If that prize was a lifetime supply of Zima malt beverage. <laughs> First couple months it's great, and then it's like, whose idea was it to continue doing this? I don't, why are we still doing this? You know, sometimes you just want something with a little more head, you know what I mean? <laughs> My wife hates that joke. My wife hates all oral sex jokes, she just doesn't get it. <laughs> I was like, you guys like doing the wave. No, I'm a happy guy. I'm happily married. I'm happily married. I, I, can't, I can't make fun of it. She keeps it, she does keep it interesting in the bedroom. She reads the Fifty Shades of Grey, which of you guys, yeah. It's, she's into this new thing now in the bedroom where we're getting into it. She likes it when I hit her over the head. Just hard enough so she forgets who I am. Yeah. It enhances the experience greatly for her. No, I'll leave, I'm going to leave you guys with this story. I, I'm a, I don't know if anybody motorcycles in here. I'm a big fan of motorcycling. Uh, I think it's good to do with your wife. I think it's like free marriage counseling. I'm going to tell you a story. It helps you work on communication, right? Like last fall, my wife and I were on the bike. We're riding together. It's great. We're leaning into curves. Everything's going great. Right? Smooth. Nonverbal communication is great. All of a sudden, a duck flies up right in front of my face. Yeah, for real. So close. I move out of the way. So close. I felt the wings hit my shoulder. My wife patted me on the back. And that's where the communication comes in because what I thought was good job avoiding that duck, honey, was... <laughs> Holy shit, I just got hit in the face by a duck. And she'll never let me forget it. Thanks so much, everybody. My name's Matthew Zerilli. Give it up for your host, Brian B.